All right, so basically we have a problem that reads, a hockey puck has a mass of 0 0.115 kilogram and is at rest. A hockey player makes a shot exerting a constant force of 30.0 newton on the puck for 0 0.16 second. With what speed does the puck head towards the goal? Okay, so the first thing is that uh, you gotta realize that there are several variables involved. And um, knowing that we're doing impulse and momentum, chances are we're going to be using um, impulse momentum theorem. So we know that impulse momentum theorem is impulse is equal to the momentum of an object. Momentum. So what this basically states is that an impulse is required to change the momentum of an object, whether it's to move an object or to stop an object. Okay, So as you know, impulse is equal to the equation F times T, and that momentum has the equation of mass times velocity. Right? But in this case, we're dealing with the change in velocity. Okay, because the momentum will change once an impulse ex is exerted on the object. So far so good? Now what this also means is that impulse is equal to force times time, but it's also equal to mass times the change in velocity. Doesn't, it, that's what, doesn't this mean the same thing? Because at the equal sign, impulse can equal FT, impulse can equal M times the change in velocity. And that momentum could equal to mass times velocity, could also equal to force times time. I thought it was just mass times velocity, not change in velocity, because of how you got that in the first place. Yeah. Because remember, uh, impulse momentum theorem comes from F is equal to mass times acceleration. Acceleration is basically the change of velocity over T. Oh, okay. Okay. It's final velocity minus initial velocity, right? Divided by time is equal to uh, acceleration. Do you remember that equation from the blue sheet? Okay. So then we have this uh, problem set out. So then now we know we have to use this basically this equation. Okay. So then what we have here is if I expand this a little bit more, FT is equal to mass times the final velocity minus the initial velocity. That's really what change in velocity means. Okay, so we have a total of five variables. Okay, five variables. So then we we should list them out: F, T, M, V, V naught. All right, and then from our problem, we will then pick out the variables that we need to do to uh, list them over here. Okay. So do we have? Uh, a force, yes. and the force is 30.0 newtons, okay, all right, and then uh, do we have a time, is 0 0.16 seconds, okay, now remember, any time that you look at the force variable, always match it to a number with a uh, the correct units, so newton is a force, so that's why it's under newtons, not anywhere else. Time always measures in seconds. And how about the mass? It measures in kilograms. And the value that we have for mass is 0 0.115 kilogram. And then the final velocity. We don't know that. We don't know that. That's what we're asked to find. So I'll put an asterisk next to that. How about the initial velocity? Zero. Zero. And how do you know it's zero? It's at rest. It's at rest. Okay. Okay, so we have our variables listed out. So then now we can actually go ahead and uh, start solving for the equation, right? So then now over here, are there anything we can eliminate off this equation before we solve for the unknown? Yeah, this is basically a zero, and we're solving for V. So ultimately, we get FT is equal to MV. And that's where the equation comes from, all right? Well, oh, usually ends up, but then it doesn't always end up having just FT is equal to MV because um, the velocity, the initial velocity, sometimes is not zero. Okay, that's why I left it at this original form. Okay, so how am I going to solve for V? So I divide both sides by mass. So FT 
over m equals v. Okay. So at this point, I'll go ahead and input the values. So f is force, and that's 30.0 newton. Time is 0.16 seconds. All divided by the mass, which is 0 0.115 kilogram. So my velocity, after you multiply and divide in your calculator, you can do them all in one step because they're all following the same significant digit rules. <coughs> The number that you should have is 41.7 meter per second. Is that correct? Yes. And then after you do the rounding, you should round it to how many significant digits? Two. Two significant digits. And why two significant digits? Because of the point 0.16. Okay? And point 0.16 has two significant digits, so therefore the answer rounds to 42 meter per second as the speed of this hockey puck. Okay? So far so good? Are there any questions? Yes, Roman. Uh, I didn't consider the whole P naught and all that, but the only reason I got the same answer is because it was at rest. Right? right, correct. And the reason why uh, a lot of people probably won't consider the V naught, the initial velocity, is because usually the initial velocity is zero. But in the case that it isn't zero, then you will have to consider the initial velocity and, con and, and basically factor that into the equation. Okay? Are we good with that? Now, what happens if there is no change in velocity? If uh, the initial velocity and the final velocity is the same? Then it's zero. If the, there's no change in momentum, then, of course, impulse is not going to be needed to change anything because there's no change in momentum. So if it's at constant velocity, there's no change in momentum? Right. The momentum stays constant. OK. So, but it depends on the type of problem. Okay. Basically, if the momentum stays constant, that means no additional impulse is required or needed to actually change the momentum. It just stays the same. The force applied will be zero because there's no force applied. Does that make any sense? Okay. So it kind of depends on the problem, but just uh, look at the problem as a whole to see what the problem is asking you to do. Okay, are we good?